Chapter 10, Volcanoes and Other Igneous Activity. Section 1 is over volcanoes and plate tectonics. Magma formation. Magma forms in the crust and upper mantle when solid rock partially melts. The formation of magma depends on three things. The first is heat. At 100 kilometers, the mantle is between 1400 and 1600 degrees Celsius and is almost melting. Additional heat comes from the friction of the lithosphere slabs and subduction zones. The mantle heats these slabs and hot mantle rock rises into the cooler lithosphere, heating it up. The second is pressure. As pressure increases the deeper you go, the temperature increases as well. Decreasing pressure will lower the rock's melting point. We call that decompression melting. As hot mantle rises, it becomes less dense than the surrounding rock and that encourages it to rise even more. Finally, water content. The water can affect the melting point. A wet rock that's found deep beneath the Earth's surface will melt at a lower temperature than dry rock of the same composition. That has to do with water's ability to hold heat and retain that heat. So here in this picture we can see these hot spots forming these mantle plumes and that decompression melting. As it becomes less pressurized, the melting point goes down and it's going to melt even more. We see some more decompression melting over here. We see that subduction zone and that crust forming those mountains. Volcanoes and plate boundaries go together. Most volcanoes form along divergent and convergent boundaries. Remember, divergent boundaries are when they're moving apart and convergent boundaries are when they're moving towards one another. Some can form far from these boundaries and we call those hot spots. A hot spot's just a small volcanic region a few hundred kilometers across that forms above what we call a mantle plume. In this picture you can see the ring of fire as it's known. The ring of fire is a long belt of volcanoes that circles the majority of the Pacific Ocean. If you remember back to class when we colored in our plates and we labeled those, you see that these volcanoes are forming in those areas where the plates are pushing against one another. So those are those convergent boundaries. Divergent boundary volcanism occurs when plates are pulling apart and mantle rock rises to fill the gap between the plates. Most are underneath the ocean, found along those mid-oceanic ridges. Convergent boundary volcanism occurs when slabs of oceanic crust are pushed down and decompression melting results in magma. This migrates up, forming volcanoes on the ocean floor. Eventually, we see the tops of these mountains as volcanic island arcs as they build. Finally, intraplate volcanism is just a volcanic activity that occurs within a plate, so in the middle of a plate. If we look at this, we can see there's some volcanoes that are found in the middle of these plates, right in here. We can see them found in here. And that's lots of reasons why that occurs, but those are the ones that occur within the middle of a plate. It's not because of the boundary action. Think about if you've ever seen a pie come out of the oven, you know how the center rises, and then as it cools down, the, cru the crust, that surface on the pie, will actually form a little crack in it. Kind of the same thing happens on our large plates. As they heat up in the middle, and then they start to cool down, they form this weak spot, and it allows that magma to seep up through there and form those hot spots, and it forms those intraplate volcanoes. A volcanic island arc results in the subduction of an oceanic tectonic plate under another tectonic plate, and often this is parallel to an oceanic trench.